in this video we are going to talk about uh, the question which we had that is from the assignment in class the biology class for online tuitions and then the question is from the biology question number five 2007 paper two this is a, that is the examinations council of zambia so the first question so I said define the term homeostasis define homeostasis i think this was one of the easiest question questions because homeostasis most of us know it is the maintenance uh maintenance we're talking about the body maintenance of a constant constant internal internal environment environment so that is homeostasis so this process is carried out by uh, living living things by living things okay excuse my uh, writing there it's not the uh, prettiest in the world right now but anyway we can get uh, the idea here so the maintenance of a constant internal environment by living things so that is homeostasis that is how we define uh, homeostasis so it is carried out by living things so take it an example the body temperature the body has to remain uh, the temperature has to remain uh, around the normal body temperature it doesn't have to go way above the normal body temperature or way below the normal body, uh, the normal body temperature that will probably uh, cause the body uh, cells not to function properly and that means trouble for the living things uh, for the living thing or the person or whatever it is uh, because the temperature is not normal because it shouldn't it's not around the normal body temperature so the job of homeostasis is to make to stabilize things so that we just have a constant internal environment so that is for us to grasp the idea of homeostasis so second, describe the importance of homeostasis in the body. So as mentioned in the example, the importance of homeostasis in the human body, number one, is that it enables the cells in the body to operate at their optimum. So it helps cells, cells in the body, the cells, to operate at their optimum rate. So it helps cells to work or operate at their optimum rate cells to work at the optimum rate optimum rate so that could have been the first uh, point there the second point uh, point we can say homeostasis is important because it helps to protect uh, the cells from damage from being damaged because uh, during the process of uh, osmosis we have water coming into the cell and out of the cell so if they absorb too much water and that level isn't maintained the cells will die uh, others might burst and if they lose too much water they might also uh, the cells might die so homeostasis is there to protect the cells from being damaged especially from the process of osmosis so it protects the body cells from uh, absorbing too much water or losing too much water so probably the third point we would have said it ensures that there is uh, enough enough fuel for respiration it ensures that the body has got enough fuel respiration or where to get the energy so here yeah, you could have just said uh, body fuel or enough fuel for respiration so that we the body has got enough energy to uh, uh, to to operate because uh, respiration actually produces gives us the uh, just the energy uh, for respiration to occur we need uh, oxygen and we need glucose so this reaction is going to produce energy in the body so we could have mentioned these three points uh, plus the other additional points we could have had all these they could have still worked so let's jump to the next part 
After playing football in the sun, a person may feel warm, but his skin is cool. Explain how this is possible. So we have got the skin uh, acting as an organ in the process uh, of homeostasis. So the skin actually, another skin, we find the sweat glands which produce sweat. So as a person is involving themselves in a lot of vigorous activity, the sweat glands are going to produce sweat, which uh, of course will cover the surface of the skin. So as they cover the surface of the skin, the sweat will evaporate into the uh, surrounding environment or into the atmosphere. And as the sweat evaporates, it gets with it the heat from the skin, it absorbs the heat from the skin. As a result, the skin will actually be cool because of uh, the sweat which is evaporating into the atmosphere, absorbing the heat uh, from the skin, hence the skin. So in simple terms, we can say sweat, sweat glands, the sweat glands, secret secrets sweat i might miss one or two words here sweat glands secrets sweat okay which evaporates covers the skin and then evaporates evaporates into the atmosphere into or let's just just say evaporates okay evaporates evaporates leaving leaving the skin cool leaving the skin cool okay, so as it evaporates it absorbs the heat and then it leaves the skin cool after fasting not eating for 12 hours a healthy adult and a diabetic adult were fed with glucose so how would the blood sugar level in a healthy adult and a diabetic adult compare so what is uh what is diabetes and if you are to answer this question correctly you need to define what diabetes is so when you talk about diabetes it is the the condition in which the blood sugar levels remain too high in the body that is a person has got too much blood sugar in the body now a healthy adult that means the blood sugar levels are just normal because we talk about homeostasis we should maintain a constant body uh, internal environment so you shouldn't have too much temperature uh, your temperature shouldn't be too high or too low even your sugar level shouldn't be too high or too low so a diabetic patient has got a problem whereby the blood sugar levels are usually too high on most uh, most of uh oh almost all most of the times so Let's see how they compare with a normal human, uh, a healthy adult. So these two individuals, they were fasting for 12 hours. They did not eat. So meaning about the sugar levels, the, the, the sugar levels were low for both of them. Okay, probably they were low. Then they were fed with glucose. They were given glucose. So... How would the blood sugar level in healthy adult and diabetic adult compare? So, the blood sugar level of a diabetic patient will be higher than that of a healthy adult. Because a healthy adult has got the ability to convert the excess glucose into another form which the body can actually store. And a diabetic uh, adult doesn't really have that uh, fluency or or smoothness in converting the excess glucose into glycogen so that the body can store it so the blood sugar levels will be too high will be higher than that the blood sugar level of the healthy adult so a diabetic patient diabetic person or adult will always have trouble converting uh, excess glucose uh, so that the blood sugar level can be maintained compared to a healthy adult who can easily uh, the body can 
since they're healthy on its own, it can control the levels of uh, blood sugar. So in in a diabetic patient, it will be higher compared to a healthy a healthy adult. So why is it that uh, diabetic patients have trouble converting excess uh, glucose? Well, it can be caused by two things. Number one is lack of insulin, which is a, a, a chemical which helps in the uh, conver conversion of uh, uh, glucose in the body. So lack of insulin or number two, it could be the body being resistant to insulin. So these are now what we call the two types of diabetes called type one and type two. So type two, we have probably lack of insulin. Uh, so type 2 diabetes lack of insulin type 1 lack of insulin and type 2 is resistant to to the insulin so these are the two types of diabetes and basically this is uh all we could have mentioned here so i've just mentioned this as an extra information type 1 type 2 i don't think it was really necessary to mention all this here when answering of course but you would have mentioned that the blood sugar level of a diabetic patient, a diabetic adult, would be higher compared to a healthy adult because uh, they have trouble uh, the converting the excess uh, sugar or storing the sugar as they don't have the insulin or they lack insulin to convert the glucose to glycogen. So we could have phrase it smilesy there. I'm not going to help you with that. I'll leave you that as an exercise for you. But uh, that is very easy. So that was it. This was the last question from the 2007 past paper 2 uh, question number 5. See you in the next video.